Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today's video is going to be the absolute basics of knife sharpening. Perfect for beginners, easy to understand, and a very low skill level required. If you've had success sharpening knives before, this video is not going to be very interesting to you. It's, it really is going to be the basics. We're going to take someone who has a dull knife and we're going to get that knife sharp. So to start, you're going to need a dull knife, one that you don't mind getting scratched up because you're going to make a lot of mistakes as a beginner. So definitely use a knife that you don't really care about how it looks. And then you're going to need a sharpening stone too. Unfortunately, before we jump into the sharpening process, we're going to have to really quickly touch on sharpening stones. I'm going to cover it in a lot more detail in another video, but I'm going to have to give you some basics here so that you can get sharpening. Um, if your knife is really dull, like isn't going to cut into flesh even with some effort dull, then you're probably going to want to start around 400 JIS or lower. If your knife is quite sharp, but not quite cutting how you want it to, then maybe around 1000 grit JIS. Um, obviously you can progress up that uh, line as well and go even higher. Now the abrasive types, unless you've got exotic steels, you can pretty much get away with any abrasive type. Diamonds are just kind of easier for me because I've got a lot of different types of steels and I like to sharpen on diamonds. So I've got electroplated diamond here. This one is uh, 600 grit JIS. This is an Atoma. And I'm just going to give you an idea of how sharp or dull this knife is. So it won't it won't catch on paper really and you can just about saw it through. So that's real, ba real basics of stones. Around 400 grit JIS if it's dull, around 1000 grit JIS if it's not that dull. The next thing we need to just very briefly touch on is kind of what is dull. So dull is going to be the thickening of the apex, so the apex is the tip of where these two bevels meet. And as that gets worn away through abrasion, um, it will get fatter and fatter and fatter. And when it gets to a, you know, a certain thickness, that's dull. So we need to make that edge thinner and thinner and thinner again. So when you're sharpening, you're going to have to be able to get your hand between the knife and the table uh, without hitting the table while sharpening. And obviously the stone is too low here. So I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to put it in a cheap stone holder. Uh, but that's also still too low for me. So I've just got a bit of perspex here. It's nothing special. You literally can just put it on top of anything. So this is quite a lot of thickness here. It allows me to get my hand raised off the table so I'm not hitting the table while I'm trying to sharpen. So we're almost ready to sharpen. There's a few more real quick things we need to talk about first. The sharpening angle. So that's the angle of the apex that you're going to form. Sharpening angle matters a lot. The lower the angle, the better cutting performance you'll get, but it may compromise edge stability if the angle gets too low depending on the task and the steel and the heat treatment. So if you're new to this, which you are because you're watching this video, aim to maintain the existing angle of the knife, which is likely between 17 and 25 degrees. Um, so you, you can literally do this by just looking at the bevel and just pl placing it flat, <laughs> placing the bevel flat on the stone. And that will maintain the angle of the existing bevel. It's, it's kind of that simple. Uh, the next thing is positioning and uh, direction of passes. So I'm just going to quickly talk about edge leading and edge trailing here. So this is the edge. So an edge leading pass would be the edge leading the pass, whether you're pulling or pushing. These are both edge leading passes because the edge is leading. This is an edge trailing pass because the edge is trailing behind the spine of the knife. So that's a trailing pass. So lots of people would say, oh, only do edge leading like this or only do edge trailing. Forget about that. Do backwards and forwards. That's scrubbing. That's edge leading and edge trailing. That's fine. The next thing is which hand to hold the knife in. Should you, should you push away from you or should you pull? That's mostly personal preference. I would suggest that pulling the knife towards you is going to be better in the long run because you can more easily see the angle that you are holding here with your eyes visually. When the knife is like this and your head is back here, you 
kind of only see this angle and that is usually more difficult to tell. You, you can't see if the apex is touching the stone. So if you lie the knife flat, there's going to be a, a gap under here and you can't see that. But if it's facing this way, you can see that gap. So you can just lift this until the gap removes. So I personally would suggest sharpening, uh, looking at the apex and then switching hands and doing it like this. Switching hands can be very difficult for some people. You will definitely be able to learn it with some muscle memory. It's not a big deal. But if you just don't want to learn it and you want to sharpen this way and then switch and sharpen that way, that's fine. Just do whatever you want. You'll get this. You, you'll be able to achieve the same results. It's, it's just preference. So two more real quick things. Uh, which way to position the knife like this? So the knife is going to be traveling in this direction, along the edge of the stone. So if you hold the knife like this, as you accelerate and decelerate, there's not much surface area in that direction, so it will be very likely to rock and hard to hold your angle. The further you can twist the knife to kind of meet parallel with the stone, the more stable that angle is going to be held. So I would suggest twisting it as much as you can where it's still comfortable and feasible to sharpen. Do not worry about how perfectly you can hold an angle. Being able to slice printer paper or newspaper or vegetables is a really low level of sharpness and you can achieve it with such a low level of skill you'll be surprised. As long as you follow these steps, even if your angle's all over the place, the knife will easily be sharp enough to cut paper. And the final thing we're going to mention before we start sharpening is going to be pressure. How much pressure should you apply? There's always kind of like loads of discussion about this. I don't know why. It's really simple. The harder you push, the faster the steel will abrade. There's downsides to that which we won't get into, but you just you don't need to press ultimately. The weight of the knife plus the weight of your hands plus maybe a little bit extra is fine. You'll be able to see what I'm doing and you'll see the results you get. Don't really worry about pressure. Don't act like you're trying to crack a walnut between the knife and the stone. That's way too much. You know, it doesn't ultimately matter that much how hard you're pressing. Just don't go crazy. So I'm going to put my knife on the stone and I'm going to look under here to s and tilt the knife at the same time until I see the apex touch the stone. And that's when I found my angle. So I found my angle here. And if I just pull the knife back, you'll see that I never touched the tip. So to get the tip, you need to lift the handle of the knife up simultaneously with pulling the knife back so that you can get the belly of the knife. Um, lots of people mention that you should never really do this with your wrist. I kind of do it with the whole of my arm and shoulder, including a bit of my wrist. Uh, the more you move your wrist around, the more likely you are to convex, so just experiment, do whatever you find best. You, you'll probably be better off kind of like lifting your elbow than your wrist. Uh, people are going to hate me for even suggesting that using your wrist is feasible, but I do it. Um, so yeah, just slowly, not much pressure. The, the hand, this hand here, I'm just kind of steadying the knife. Um, I'm not like pushing it backwards and forwards. And so you only need to do this for as long as it takes for a flap of steel to start to form on the opposite side. So we're abrading this side and that will make a flap of steel form on this side. Don't worry about speed when you're new. Uh, just go slowly, stay consistent. The speed will come with a, a whole bunch of practice. Okay, so I've got a big flap of steel here. Way too much. I can feel it. You can probably hear it. But the, the best way to check for this flap of steel if it's small is if you get a light and you shine it down from the spine you can see, I think you can probably see on here, it's difficult for me to see through the viewfinder this flap of steel is hanging out here and the light will reflect differently off it so once you've got that flap of steel 
switch sides. And you don't only braid on this side until the flap moves over because then you'll have an uneven bevel. You'll have ground this one down real nice and then this one will kind of be like that. So you want to push it back so you've got an equal amount of braided. So that will end up flipping the burr back to the side you were just on. I've got a huge burr here now. I'm just wondering if we can get it in focus. You can see it. I flipped this huge burr back to the other side. So we've used our 600 grit stone, which was too coarse for this job, and we have abraded both sides equally until we have created a new apex with fresh steel. Now you can either progress up the stones, up your grits, and refine the edge, make it sharper and smoother, or you can deburr. Deburring on 600 grit diamond is pretty difficult, so we're gonna go up to a higher grit stone. So this is a 1200 grit stone. GIS, electro plated diamond, Atoma again, for anyone interested. So we last worked on this side, so this is where we've got our burr. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on here because it's going to abrade pretty quick. So I'm just going to scrub on the stone, same as we did before. And the thing to look out for here will be a burr again. So I'm going to switch back over to the other side. That's probably plenty. So we can see a huge burr on here now. That's massive. Now we're going to do the deburring part. And all the stages are important. But this is potentially the most important. If you have formed a burr and done everything perfectly, if you don't get rid of the burr, your knife won't be sharp, so you may as well not have done anything. What we're going to do is the side of the burr, which is this side, that's the side that's going to go towards the stone, and we're going to do edge leading passes. So this is the edge, the edge is going to lead this way, we're going to be very light, we're going to do a single pass, then we're going to look and see if the burr is still there. So at the same angle you were sharpening, very lightweight pass, going to wipe the debris off the edge and check for a burr. I can still see burr, I can still feel burr. So don't get, um, don't lose your patience here and start rushing things. This is the most important part. Sometimes I like to check both sides for a burr, not because there's going to be a burr on both sides, but sometimes I think I see a burr but it's actually just kind of debris on the edge and when you flip it, you're like, oh wait, no, the burr has moved. So sometimes it's useful, uh, or at least for me it is. Maybe I'm just stupid. Cool, so my burr has gone now from both sides after a bit of fighting. So we'll do a quick sharpness test. You remember what it was like before when, uh, when it was dull, we could barely cut paper in a, even in a sawing motion and it wouldn't catch at like a low angle, so. We'll just try again now, and that is easily sharp enough for, well this knife is kitchen duties, so that's easily sharp enough for kitchen duties. But I wouldn't be doing my job properly as the owner of stroppy stuff if I didn't at least touch on stropping. So I've got other videos about stropping which you can go into in more detail, I'll link them below. Stropping is amazing especially for new people. It levels up your edge hugely with really low skill. Stropping is usually done on a leather surface or I, I personally like uh, basswood a lot or limewood. Lots of people use denim or canvas or whatever. Here I've got leather and I've got diamond compound loaded on it. This is one micron diamond compound one micron is kind of my go-to. It doesn't matter what grit stone I just came from. I always use one micron. Uh, almost always use one micron to start with. Any remnants of burr left on this knife will come off very fast on this and it will also just make that apex a bit keener. So I'm going to just quickly strop on this then we'll do another quick uh, sharpness test with it. So with stropping you'll want to do edge trailing only, no edge leading because you'll cut into the strop. 
Um, regardless of your stropping substrate, it's going to be softer than whatever the stone was, even if you're using wood. Uh, you know, and that just means you're very likely to gouge the apex into the strop by mistake and just cut your strop and dull your knife. So now we just stropped, I'm going to do another sharpness demonstration. I'm going to try and cut a circle into the paper. So that's by no means like an impressive feat, but that's pretty sharp. If you can do that, you're on your way to getting a pretty sharp knife. This will obviously shave effortlessly. I may even whittle hairs at this sharpness. Uh, and really we got there. A, a huge portion of that was, was done with a strop. You're not going to make a knife sharp with a strop, but you can get a sharp knife real sharp with a strop. Thank you to everyone who watched it this far. If you did watch it this far, I can almost guarantee that you're going to have a very sharp knife very easily. If you found this video useful, please leave a comment or subscribe or do something that will help me out. Buying something from my website will definitely help me out, however. we got strops, all sorts of different sizes, the best compounds on the market. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.